What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you guys tuning in to another video. Welcome to the juice. So the juice is my recap videos from each tournament that I fish throughout the year. So if you guys are new to the channel, one, make sure you hit the subscribe button, but two, welcome to the juice. And the juice is presented by Fish USA. So if you guys are looking for any sort of tackle, really any sort of fishing tackle, not just bass fishing, but any sort of tackle, Fish USA is the place to do it. Head on over, check the link in the description down below. You can head right over to Fish USA and pick up actually the exact tackle I'm about to talk about. But anything else that you want for fishing, Fish USA has and they'll get it to you real fast. So today we're talking about the, uh, it's one of the last tournaments of the year for me. You know, we got, uh, it, we, we, we fished the Bass Pro Tour on the St. Lawrence River. We stayed the entire time and stayed there the whole week until, or a couple weeks until the uh, Toyota Series. So today we're gonna talk about the Toyota Series event. I finished up 16th place, so it was a pretty good tournament. We're gonna talk about the juice, kind of what went on, how things changed throughout the week, and uh, show you a few key bait adjustments that helped me have a good finish. All right, so things look a little different for the Toyota series than the Bass Pro Tour. They look a little more uh, normal, I guess you could say, for what I'm used to. So we caught them all on a spinning rod this week. You know, in, in the Bass Pro Tour, I caught a lot of fish shallow on a jerk bait, but that bite just kind of fizzled out for me. You know, it, it wasn't quite as good as it, it was in the Bass Pro Tour. I know a lot of guys still caught them shallow, but for me, I kind of wanted to switch things up. I wanted to do things a little bit different. And then with it being a five fish format, you know, I wanted to spend my time down closer to, to the lake towards the off limits. So I spent my time pretty much from Cape Vincent to Alexandria Bay, you know, that, that section down closer toward the lake. The quality just seems a little bit better down there. Um, I just feel like your odds of catching a, a six pound fish are a little bit better down there. So that's why I decided to go down there. And I had a couple really good days of practice down there and it kind of sucked me in and committed me to it. So, you know, I kind of just had to, to, to go with it and see what happens. Now, taking off from Messina, it is an hour and a half plus boat ride to get down there. So instantly you're cutting your day basically in half. You know, if you have an eight hour tournament day, and you're driving for at least three hours of that day, you only have less than five hours of actual fishing time once you get down there. So, you know, the, the hard part about that is, is making that long run, getting all hyped up and getting there and then having to really slow down and fish methodically for these fish. Glad that noise machine is out of here. So basically I had, I had a, a, couple, a couple little areas um, that I wanted to focus on that had that bigger average fish. So I get down there the first day and uh, I catch two pretty good ones pretty early, but then it kind of died off on me. <coughs> you know, and, and the first thing I noticed that morning was there was a lot more bait fish in the area. I'm not sure what exactly they were. They're little tiny bait fish. Now I'd really never seen them before, but instantly I knew something had changed, whether it was some sort of migration coming in off the lake or the wind kind of stirred things around, but I noticed a lot of the smallmouth were not on the bottom anymore. They were kind of up chasing that bait around. So I forced it for really the first half of the day, you know, trying to catch them on the jigs. I mean, that's what I had such a great practice on. And I mean, you guys see me throw this over the last couple of weeks. We've done a couple of videos on it, just a little Ned rig jig. So I got two different kinds right here. You know, this one is actually just a, a little Kitek football jig half ounce and then i got a, a yamamoto ned Senko on there the ned Senko is really key because it's so soft you can see how he dances around a lot better than your other uh ned style baits he's a lot softer and dances around has a lot more action so i was throwing the uh you know the kitek one and then the uh the beast coast jig as well but this one was a 3 8 so it's a little bit lighter um, but it's a the same ned Senko on there that's green pumpkin magic I like a little silver flake in, in my baits just to kind of trigger those fish. And really I'd planned on catching the bulk of my fish on those two baits and then just a drop shot. You know, your, your standard drop shot with a three ace, a half ounce weight. I had a couple different drop shots on the deck 
and uh, you know, I was mixing up the baits, throwing a shad shaped worm, throwing a, a little Yama Tanuki, kind of imitate a goby, throwing some, some fuzzy baits. I mean, throwing some wild things at some of these fish to try and get them to bite. And uh, you know, it just didn't quite pan out. Like I said, I only had two fish at really about 12 o'clock on, eh, I'd say 11 o'clock on the first day. And I kind of made an adjustment, you know, like I'd mentioned earlier, I'd seen a lot of those fish up off the bottom chasing bait fish. And I hadn't really caught any in practice doing that, but I knew as soon as I seen that, that, you know, I needed to switch to a, a shad imitating bait. So, you know, I kind of didn't really make the best decision right off the bat. I went and picked up a bait that I don't have a whole lot of confidence in, but I just seen how the guys did in the week before in the elite series, throwing that bigger style minnow, like a four or five inch Sakamata shad or, or bigger style minnow. And I was like, that's probably what I need to throw to catch these bigger fish. And that was not the case at all. So I, I threw that for the rest of the day on that first day. Um, and you know, I was only able to catch, I, I finished out my limit. Don't get me wrong. I caught a couple more fish. I caught, I think one more on the jig and then two on the minnow but they, a lot of them were just looking at it and not biting it. So, um, you, know, you know, I kind of regrouped heading into day two. I, I think I had 20 pounds, seven ounces day one. So I kind of regrouped heading into day two and I made a really key bait adjustment. So one of those fish that I did catch on the larger minnow style bait spit up those little tiny bait fish. And I was like, I know exactly what mimics that. So I went and dug out and pulled out old trusty, the Yamamoto, scope shad the three inch version that little snack and then day two and day three it was all about the scope shad we caught them all on this i don't know why those got yellow that i kind of threw them in my my garbage bin here i think they reacted with some other plastics or something but i was not trying to do that for you guys i could already see the comments oh look he's dying them chartreuse no i was not dying them chartreuse i was throwing just the straight green gizzard color it looked just like those little bait fish. And once I made that bait switch, I went from getting, say, one out of 20 fish to bite to one out of two, 50% bite ratio once I made this key bait adjustment. And that was all it took from there. You know, I, I was a lot more confident throwing a bait that I love and was able to catch a lot more fish the next two days and, uh, you know, kind of moved up each day and figured it out more. I feel like if I had a fourth day to go back out, I would have caught them even better because I was learning more and more about it as the tournament went on. But here's the setup right here. So I was throwing it on a pretty light jig head. It's thrown on three sixteenths and a quarter, just depending on, you know, how windy and wavy it was. I wanted a real slow fall um, to, you know, get down there and look natural. Eight pound Seaguar Tatsu on the minnow. And then uh, the Seaguar PEX braid on there as well. But that is, uh, that's what caught the bulk of the fish, especially the last two days. I, I think I caught almost every one of them on that guy right there. I might've caught a couple on the jig, um, but I may have called them out on the minnow. I'm not quite sure, but overall it was a great tournament. I learned a lot about the, the St. Lawrence River the, these last three weeks being there. Um, you know, throughout the Bass Pro Tour, heading into the Elite Series was there. I didn't fish a whole lot. And then uh, heading into the Toyota Series, like it was really cool to, to see how the fishery changed and uh, learned a lot about those big smallmouth up there. So that's always a good thing. That's the goal. But appreciate you guys tuning in for the juice. I got some work to do. I got to rig up all my tackle. We got the Team Series that starts in the morning which by the time you guys watch this, it would be yesterday, but the days are all mixed up. I got a bunch of tackle to rig up. I gotta get all these rods rigged up and ready. I don't know where I'm going fishing tomorrow, so it's, uh, it's hard to, to prep tackle, but I got a lot of work to do, so appreciate you guys. As always, don't forget, hit the subscribe, hit the like, the comments, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.